Oh All right, let's begin. So that way you guys know uh, what we're doing today. And also, if you guys remember on the whiteboard, it does say that we are starting our uh, chemistry internal next week. So I want to give you guys some guidelines on what to expect. Um, Makia today was asking about why do some of the precipitates disappear when we add sodium hydroxide or ammonia to it. Uh, the reason why has to do with the fact that a complex ion is formed. And complex ions are soluble. So that's why that case is appearing. I wanted to highlight that justification so that way you guys can write that on your sheets when you're justifying your observations and your procedures. So if you see a precipitate disappear, which is very common in the cation identification flowchart, you can tell me it's disappeared because a complex ion is formed and complex ions are soluble. We good? Do you need me to write that down? Yes. You want me to write that down? Yeah. Okay, cool. Uh, let me get my document camera out and I'll put it on a piece of paper and scan it. Um, get that. Remember that sort of stuff is needed for the excellence level. You can grab that. I was going to pass it out. Do you want me to pass it out? Uh, yeah, give everyone one. Cool. Grab a piece of paper and I'll write that down. And I'll put it actually even in green pen so that way you know it's kind of like one of the excellence level things I'm looking for. On center. Yeah, go for it. Just grab it. All right. So if you guys remember that Mahia do now question. So why uh, do precipitates disappear? I'm sure I'm spelling disappear right because I am a terrible speller. There's two P's in it. <laughs> All right, so when you guys are thinking about that justification and we're looking at, let me actually grab one of those sheets so you guys can see what I mean by the justification. So here is the template in which you are writing up your practical. You have your exper experimental steps. You have your, have your observations. And then in this section here, I want to see a justification of your procedure, um, identification of the precipitations, and the equations. And I've added a little reminder here to help you guys out. So remember to write both the ionic name and formulas for the precipitation identification because the names give you a backup in case you make a mistake on the formulas. Um, also, when you talk about your procedure justification, I need linkage to information in the flow chart. So basically, how has the flow chart made you help influence you in your decision in using it? So for example, uh, I didn't see a white precipitate, so I've eliminated these possible cations. The other thing I need to see is that you're linking to the solubility rule. So this precipitate is forming because um, all hydroxides are insoluble sort of thing. Does that make sense? All right. One of the other things you're going to then need to justify is why precipitates disappear. So the precipitate has disappeared uh, because... If you want, someone asked me to write this down, so that's why I'm writing it down. Because a complex ion formed 
which is soluble. Or you can say which is now soluble if you want to be more specific. So I'm just writing that down. I've written it down in green because that kind of information is what I'm looking for in the justification of an excellence level student. Yeah, someone asked me to write it down so that way they can get that kind of sentence. So just being uh, mindful that you need to justify what's happened to that precipitate. Cool. Right. I'll give you guys another second because I still see people writing it down. And don't worry, I will scan it. I'll put it on my uh, Google site. <laughs> All right, can I move it? No. No? Yeah. So just mention that you understand why this, the precipitate has disappeared. It has to do with those complex lines that we talked about in that last lesson. Can I move that? Yeah. Cool. All right. We need to cover for this topic. So basically the plan for today's lesson is to give you guys practice um, with the write-up. And also, when you do that practice, you will be... Um, what was I going to say about that? <laughs> With this practice that I'm giving you guys today, I want you to identify both the cation and the anion in the solution that I provided, so that way you can tell me what the ionic compound is. Because you need to be able to tell me and put those two bits of information together to say the ionic compound of this unknown is blank. So we're basically doing a trial run of what you guys will be getting on the assessment in the practical setting. So, you should be able to identify an unknown ionic compound and also explain to me how you found it. That's that justification component. So, lesson plan for today, I'll talk about the internal and explain what to expect for next week and for week three. Um, you guys will have a chance to do the practical with the unknown of an ionic compound. Um, and then I'll do a debrief to kind of remind you of some common mistakes. Um, or just some overall kind of things to remember. Are we good with that so far? All right. So success criteria-wise, we've covered everything on that checklist. Um, so basically, what you should be able to do at this point is be showing you understand this material and that you are ready for, I should say, the internal, the assessment, whatever you want to call it. And in that case, that is being able to identify the unknown and then justify how you've been able to identify that unknown. Remember, we're doing a qualitative analysis. We're thinking about what is there. Cool. So let me give you guys some information about the internal so you know what to expect and also to take off some of the pressure because I'm mindful some of you guys have been a, might be a bit anxious. Uh, I also know you guys, a lot of you take biology as well. We have a biology internal too, so it's a lot on your plate right now. All right. So. When I see you guys on Tuesday, we will start the internal process. But I want you guys to keep in mind, with this internal, I'm giving you basically two opportunities to show me evidence. So I'm giving you two ionic compounds. With those ionic compounds, you only need to get one at the grade that you want to get the overall grade. At oh my gosh. Point. You guys happy about that? Yes. So what that means, is I give you ionic compound number one no, and I give you ionic compound number two. All right, let's say ionic compound number one you got an achieved on. Yeah. Yeah. All right, ionic compound number two you got a merit on. Yeah. So the grade I'm going to give you is a merit. Oh my god! All right, if you got a not achieved on the first one. What if I wanted an achieved and an excellence? And an excellence, I'll give you the excellence. Oh my god. Alright? So, if you make a mistake on one of them, I'm going to give you the higher of the two. Oh my god. Okay? 
That's how I've designed the assessment. Does that ease some of the pressure off? Okay. All right. So, the first that I call we are doing, we are doing week number two. Uh, remember with that assessment, you're going to need to practically figure out what that ion is. And you also have to do the write-up section as well. So discussing how that ionic um, compound or the ions in that ionic compound can affect human and environmental uh, situations. <laughs> it, pro it might take you guys two lessons to get that done. I'm not 100% sure. I'll see how you guys go. But I have blocked out week number three as well. Um, in case we need to do more time on the assessment. And week number three, I'll, my plan is to give you the second ionic compound. We good? All right. Here's some good news. Oh, I already mentioned that. Um, since you, wait, yes. No, I can check for you in a moment. All right. Cool. So, here's the thing. What's going to happen is I'll give you the first ionic compound. I'll give you feedback and I'll tell you what the grade was for that first ionic compound. If you are happy with that grade, you don't need to sit the second ion. Oh. Okay? Yeah. Does that help? Yes. Yes. Okay. So if you're happy with that first ionic compound, you don't need to sit the second one because you can pass with just one of them. And then for those that are doing the next one, they will do the, that one. Those that are happy with their grade can use that time as tutor time. Really great if you're working on for biology and stuff like that. Does that sound good? Yes. Right, does that ease some of the pressure off? Yes. That's what I thought. Okay. Cool. So, I want to make sure you guys have practice, especially with the practical stuff. At home, you guys obviously have the mommy choice, and there's a lot of lists of different pages. You can do the side pad, um, you can do the practice on science scribe, and things like that. But the thing that's going to be important is that you guys can do the practical experiment as well. So while we're in class, I want to make sure you guys have the chance to access the practical reagents. Mm. So for today, um, everyone should have this sheet here. This is your template sheet. And I want you to identify the cation and the anion of the ionic solutions that I put up there. Okay? You guys have kept your ice cream containers, so hopefully all the reagents you need for the test is in there. If not, I have put them on the side bench. There's the test tube racks and the test tube as well, and I'll put the unknowns on this desk over here. Um, what else did I want to say about this? Um, obviously, you carry tied up goggles on. Um, I want you guys to do the full write up. And if you guys have time, I'm happy to give you another ion upon half. Are we good so far? Now, I just want you guys to be mindful. There are going to be two beakers up here. It's, uh, but you are identifying the cation in one and the anion in the other one. I have separated the cation and anion because I don't want any potential cross contamination when you guys do your different tests. But do be mindful that it, those two. Um, Beakers are the ionic compounds. You take the cation that you've solved in one and the anion you solved in the other, and that's the ionic compound of the unknown. Are we okay? Oh. I've just separated those so that there's no cross contamination. Cool. Mm -hmm. All right, you guys have the whole period to get that one done. I'll get your reagents out. Um, if you finish it early, I can get another one out. Um, be mindful to obviously get the work checked off from me so I give you feedback and I can use it as evidence that I need it. Cool. All right, hop to it. And I have more sheets of the template if you want to take any extra sheets. I'll get the number. The number for your goggles. 21. Actually, I'll do it later. All right, can I have everyone's attention real quick? Yes. I'm giving you guys information about the assessment. I think you want to listen to me. Okay, here is what we will do. Because um, NZQA does says you can experimentally do things in pairs, but the write-up needs to be individual. So this is what is what we'll do. 
So the experimental steps and the observations you guys can do in pairs. I know a couple of you guys have been asking if uh, you can do it in groups of three and the answer is no. It's very specific on NZQA, that's a pair, okay? What we will do is you guys can do the experimental procedure together in pairs and figure out the ion together. The justification and the equation needs to be done individually. And the, I can't spell today, by yourself. All right, so what you will be able to do in pairs is do the experiment together, figure out what the ion is uh, for all of your solutions, and then justify it um, by yourself and do the report by yourself. What I suggest you guys do is do all your experimental steps, one, two, you know, one, two, that sort of thing, three, three, that sort of stuff. What I suggest, so that way you guys aren't running out of space, is once you know what the ion is, start doing your justification. So you can go to the anion and you know what it is, write down everything you need to know about it to justify it, make sure you have um, your, um, what you've ruled out, your solubility rules, your precipitate identification and your equation. And then once you have everything written down, then start the justification for number two. So that way you guys don't have to worry about running out of space and making things messy. Does that make sense? Because I know I was doing it in a very out of order thing. It wasn't a good way to explain it to you guys. <laughs> All right, cool. Because I was trying to show you guys achieve merit and excellence. So then write up everything you need to do for number two and then write up everything you need to do for number three. Okay? Um, so that stuff is going to be done by yourself. And like I said, identify the precipitates. Um, oh, this is an old copy. Sorry. Uh, identify precipitates. Write the ionic name and formula. Make sure you're justifying your procedure. So telling me what in the flow chart helped you decide which way to go, what solubility rules helped you know what the precipitate was. Okay? I need that detail because the justification is important. All right, I'll let you guys keep working. Try to get the anion done today. I would say uh, it's more important for you guys to get the anion identified than uh, doing the write-up because you can do the write-up at home and show me. But you can't do the practical at home. Hold on, let me just start the recording. All right, everybody, so just some recap stuff and some extra information. So, uh, talking to you guys today, what we will do, oh, that's the only one I need. What we will do next week is Tuesday, I'll give you guys some more time to kind of study and practice, and we'll start the first time that I'm assessing on the Thursday, okay? Um, make sure you're washing things. Uh, there's brushes on the table. Find if you need them to kind of get the precipitates out. Um, so just to recap today's learning attention, we were looking at being able to identify an unknown ionic compound. Compound is the key in that word. It's not just one ion, it's the cation and the anion. Um, if you guys are struggling with this and you're not currently meeting your goal grades, make sure you guys are looking at the Mahi Choice task. Um, and that uh, it's on the Google site. Um, make sure you keep practicing and completing work. Send me emails, send me photographs of your work. I'm happy to give you feedback. Uh, you're welcome to work outside of class. And I can use that as evidence in case you make a mistake on the internal. So just a reminder, this is the monkey choice that I'm talking about. Uh, there's pages in your side pad you can do. There's pages in the ESA that you can do. Uh, you can also write up um, on the assessment template as well. I have spares of the assessment template if you guys want to take some with you. You're welcome to just practice based off of picking it on the flow chart and writing it up as a theory. Or if you want to go on to science drive and use this video to practice as practical. Like a dry practical. Uh, but do keep in mind, you're going to get a practical by yourself. You're not to pay your parents um, on the actual assessment. So, but that stuff that you guys can do remotely, you don't need to be in class to do that. Uh, so do keep that practice. All right, make sure you wash your hands because you've been dealing with lots of chemicals.